Good evening, viewers. We welcome you to the Legal View, and here I am, Apurva Aroda. Tonight, we delve into the realm of workplace sexual harassment and its legal framework designed to fight it. Focusing on the sexual harassment of women at the Workplace Act, commonly known as the Posh Act. Joining us today, the legal expert, Ms. Ravi Weeble, specialized in employment law and advocate at Supreme Court of India. We welcome you, ma'am. Thank you, Apurva. Thank you for inviting me. Ma'am, could you please give an overview to our viewers about the objectives of the Posh Act and its importance? See, POSH Act 2013 was promulgated by the parliament for the safety and security of women at workplaces. Now, before we understand the objective of POSH Act, let us understand the other laws across the world. Under the Indian Constitution, uh, Article 14 says that state has to provide equality of law to all citizens and there cannot be any denial of equal protection of laws on the grounds of gender. Article 15 says that there cannot be any discrimination inter alia on the grounds of gender. Article 191G of the Constitution states that everybody has the equal right to practice any profession, trade, or business irrespective of the gender. Article 51AE, which is in the nature of fundamental duties, enjoy, enjoins duty upon every citizen not to do any act which is derogatory to the modesty of a woman. Now, if we see globally, you've got the CEDAW guidelines, that is the Convention of Elimination of Against Discrimination Against Convention of Elimination of Discrimination Against Women of All Kinds. You've got the Beijing Declaration, which too states that any form of discrimination against women should be not entertained. So to achieve objective of all these acts was the POSH Act promulgated for safe, happy, healthy working space for the women. And prior to promulgation of the POSH Act also, we always had the Indian Penal Code. However, and we also had the uh, CDA rules in the organization, which is taking disciplinary action against the errant employees. However, these provisions did not really create a deterrent. So POSH Act was created, which is basically a prevention and a prohibition and a redressal mechanism by which deterrent is created in the organization for cases of sexual harassment. That's the objective. How does the Posh Act apply on cases and what steps can be taken in response to the complaint? So what happens under Posh Act is that an internal complaint committee has to be there in every organization, which should be having one senior lady member as the chairperson, also known as the presiding officer. Then there have also to be two more members from the employees who are committed to the cause of women, and there has to be an outside member. Not less than half of this quorum has to be majorly women. And uh, they, whenever a complaint comes, they ask response from the male employee, they ask for reply, and they issue him a charge sheet. Now, depending upon what the reply comes, and if the charges are not very grave, they can always uh, try to settle the matter first. If they, let, let, let me tell you here, Apurva, that settlement does not mean settlement by way of a monetary compensation. Now, if the settlement does not happen, then an inquiry is conducted into the charges that have been leveled against the male employee. There has to be a full-fledged inquiry conducted. There has to be a charge sheet given, reply called for, principles of natural justice, or the alterum partum that we say have to be complied with, complete opportunity of leading evidence, cross-examination has to be given, and depending upon all these evidences, cross-examinations, a report is prepared by the inquiry committee. That report is then given to the disciplinary authority of the organization. Based upon the report, if the disciplinary authority so feels, it can take a disciplinary action against the errant male employee. And if the show cause, before taking an action, a show cause notice has to be given to the male employee, stipulating the penalty in that uh, show cause notice, and giving him a copy of the report. And depending upon the reply of the male employee, an action can be taken by the disciplinary authority. So this is how the law under POSH Act work, and this is the, exactly the procedure prescribed under the POSH Act. Ma'am, can you please throw some light on the judgments of the sexual harassment cases? See, there have been several dictums uh, on the prevention of sexual harassment. In fact, way back in the year 1997, 
celebrated judgment of Apex Court of Vishakha was pronounced, as per which there were, uh, there were guidelines laid down for prevention of sexual harassment in organizations. However, since there were no penal consequences for not following the guidelines of Vishakha, therefore the Posh Act was promulgated in the year 2013. Now, talking about the latest judgments in 2023, a very uh, nice judgment, again, it's going to be a celebrated one in the times to come, by the name of Aureliano Fernandez was the state of Goa has been pronounced by the Honorable Supreme Court, wherein it has been said that while the act is there, but the, the, there have been lapses in the implementation of the act, and so the guidelines have been prescribed. Then thereafter, you've got the judgment of 1990s by, of April export by the Apex Court again, which says that very specifically, no generosity, benevolence, or sympathy is to be shown in the cases of Posh Act. Whenever there's a case proved beyond doubt of sexual harassment, the male employee must be punished with the strictest of penalty to create a deterrent in the organization, and that such conduct should not be tolerated. Then very interesting judgment again uh, by the name of Dharmindra versus Union of India. In this case, the employee, the male employee was imposed a punishment also for committing an act of sexual harassment. At the same time, he was transferred to another location. So he filed a case saying that there is double geopardy. He has been punished, but he has also been transferred to another location. So there is double penalty for one offense. Court said that penalty has been imposed for the act of misconduct, but he has been transferred to another location to maintain the harmony of the organization. Then very interestingly, recently in 2021, Bombay High Court in the case of P versus V have laid down guidelines that the cases of Posh Act, the details of the accused a male employee or of the victim female employee are not to be revealed. The facts of the cases are not to be revealed. The inquiry report is not to be revealed. It should not go to social media. It has to be kept absolutely confidential. Also, another very peculiar case is by Calcutta High Court very recently, which was a complaint by a woman against a woman. And it was said that even this would be maintainable under the Prevention of Sexual Harassment Act. Also, Madras High Court has clarified that if it's a case of personal feuds, misunderstandings, fights between a male and female, that is not sexual harassment. That is part and parcel of the work. So these are some of the important dictums for prevention of sexual, sexual harassment over the years since 1997 till 2023. We truly agree with you, ma'am, but what happens if a false complaint is filed under the Posh Act? Now, Purva, that's a very interesting question. And in fact, Posh Act has taken care of it. Posh Act in Section 14 says that if there is a malicious complaint by a woman employee, even she has to be punished. However, please note that if a woman has not been able to prove a case, that would not mean that the complaint was malicious. It has to be proved beyond all reasonable doubt by the male employee that actually the complaint was malicious. So that is what really happens if it is proved beyond doubt with evidence by the male employee against female that the complaint was malicious, even she would be punished equally. Thank you, Ms. Ravi Weevil, for your valuable insight on the complex issue. And this concludes our interview. We will monitor development on this complex issue and the provision of this act and provide valuable details as they are provided. Thank you for joining and keep watching Legal View.